Okay, we're going to look at how um, we might use storytelling in the English classroom in a critical, creative and reflective way. Plan. Have an introduction. Explore definitions of storytelling. Have a methodology and ethics. You're largely going to be qualitative in your approach, but also analysing any quantitative data. The um, Cambridge um, Storytelling Project has quite a bit of this, and it should be ethical. Your literature view could explore different approaches to the use of storytelling in the classroom and some theories about storytelling. We'll look at this in a minute. Subject knowledge, explore your own experiences of storytelling to educate and how they might be used in the English classroom. Practical applications, look at some lesson plans and critique them. Sum up your findings in a conclusion. Right, there are two main modes of storytelling. There's the oral and this is how storytelling began, we're always telling stories to each other. We could roughly divide that into the formal storytelling that goes on, a, a work like the Iliad, a poem by someone we call Homer, is a formal uh, form of storytelling in the sense that people will gather around and specially listen to it, and fairy tales and ballads and parables, all would have this kind of formal aspect of people specially listening to a story. The informal storytelling goes on all the time. It's anecdotes, jokes, gossip, accounts of things. Written, well, this is only a relatively recent mode and oral stories have been transferred to the page. So Grimm's fairy tales are examples of taking folk tales and transferring them to the page and fixing them and perhaps misrepresenting them in some sort of way because writing inevitably does that doesn't it, it decontextualizes um, a story from its teller from its context stories become codified and ranked according to how good they are in the kind of printed canon and stories are now changing uh, with the advent of online with multimodal approaches we'll look at this in a minute literature view there are obviously difficulties in that many stories are not written down, therefore you should consider the oral traditions which existed before writing and printing. It was not until quite recently that we could record people telling stories. Um, oral stories that have been written down have become central part of our literary canon. Gilgamesh, Greek myths, fairy stories, folk stories and ballads, the Shakespeare and the Romantics use a lot of oral stories as their sources. We'll look at this as we go through. Issues connected with colonialism and cultural appropriation and othering. Um, a book like The Golden Bough by Fraser is an example of a collection of stories um, gathered from various places around the world in the 19th century but they were colonised places and the approach taken sort of very much others or makes the stories sort of um, quite exotic and different um, in a way which is uh, many people have questioned. Sto Sapiens is an interesting book, A Brief History of Mankind. In it Harari points out that all humans have uh, created cultures through stories so he sees storytelling as absolutely central to uh, the story of being a human being it enables uh, humans to bond socially and to unite to form a common purpose and ways of living together for Harari religions are the products of storytelling so we tell stories all the time uh, for example he has a very good bit in the book about money money is a part of a kind of narrative of modern day life now. It is a fictional invention though, um, when you look at it closely. Very interesting. Other people have looked at um, storytelling from a different point of view. Freud argues that storytelling is really about wish fulfillment. Interesting essay on that link there about um, daydreaming and creative writing, which is all about really the ways in which we tell stories to fulfill our desires. Jung um, said that there are um, these archetypes, these sort of images that are common to all humans that are drawn from our subconscious minds that come in many stories and he looks at four archetypes of the mother, rebirth, a spirit and the trickster 
in that book there. He lived way before 2010. This is an updated edition. Decolonializing storytelling, people like Catherine Belsey, Terry Eagleton, Chinua Achebe examine the importance of, of ideology in storytelling and looking for them like Belsey for the gender based kind of uh, issues there. Eagleton often looks at the role of social class in stories and uh, Chinua Achebe looks at the kind of racial stereotypes in um, different types of stories. Many stories um, from colonialized cultures have been appropriated by their dominant white cultures and whitewashed, stripping the stories of local subversive power. So stories like Br'er Rabbit might be an example of taking an African sort of story and uh, kind of colonizing it in a way, making it, um, cutting out the kind of essential elements to the story possibly. Um, We've got a couple of modern articles here, one about Navajo storytelling practice in uh, schools showing how, um, you know, indigenous Americans can uh, claim back their tradition by telling traditional stories within the American context. Another one is looking at decolonizing arts and image-based research in New Zealand, not necessarily about school, but interesting about the ways in which um, giving people a chance to tell their own stories is a really important process of decolonizing, giving them back the chance to voice their stories. Bruna uh, argues that storytelling is a vital part of the social psychological development of a child and it's from our stories that we get a sense of self, morality, sense of belonging. Children need to learn to to discover stories for themselves and have plenty of practice telling stories to different audiences. Um, and you can find more there. Bruno, very important child psychologist. Feminist storytelling, Caroline Steedman, famously in The Tidy House, a, a book in the library, looks at the way in which child-centered approaches to storytelling can be really important for girls. And she looks at a case study of some girls from the 1970s, which she followed and looks at the ways in which they constructed stories, written stories in the end from their spoken conversations and a facilitating teacher who uses questions strategically to help them develop storytelling skills. And that obviously is important. Subject knowledge. Well, the English classroom is a rich source of storytelling. Classic Cambridge Classic Projects has a lot of original research on the website about storytelling, well worth looking at. Um, the Crick Cat Club is a modern sort of storytelling um, organization led by Ben Haggerty and people like Jan Blake are telling stories from other cultures, um, African cultures in a really interesting way well worth looking at their website and the ways in which they work in schools. Many of the storytellers there will go into schools and work um, with schools to get uh, tell stories and get children telling each other stories. Fairy Stories and Urban Myths British Council website is quite good for ESOL learners but quite relevant for um, the modern classroom, particularly modern London classroom. Um, Shakespeare and storytelling, we'll look at this in a minute, very important, romantics and storytelling, the rhyme of ancient Man mariner or Shelley's The Mask of Anarchy all come from kind of um, stories from oral culture and then we've got the many stories that are read in the classroom, novels uh, actually come from folk stories like Dracula and Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Angela Carter and Caroline Duffy are two interesting female writers of modern day who really explore this in some depth in their books. Um, Carter most famously in The Bloody Chamber and Caroline Duffy in her uh, updating of mo myths. Multimodal storytelling has happened and uh, Vicky McElroy and Jim Anderson have written a, a seminal book on the ways in which digital storytelling can help with literacy, particularly with EAL learners. Practical applications. Stories tell, students should perhaps be telling stories to each other. Ghost stories are a great introduction to this. They tell stories from um, their own cultures, get students to do this in pairs, in groups, and tell stories to the class. 
and they can then draw out from that what are the um, ingredients of a good ghost story, a good story, what do you need to do to tell it um, without a script in front of you, just to tell it to an audience and think about the ways in which stories will be told very differently depending on the audience, the circumstance, even with the same teller. And this is vital, isn't it? It's very different from a written story, which is always obviously the same. An oral uh, story is uh, there, and the kind of key elements are there, the setting, the characters, the narrative, but they may change slightly from telling to telling, or a lot, depending on the audience. The teacher can become a very important oral storyteller of important texts using a half-side approach, imagining there's a kind of fire there, and telling stories to children. Um, using objects, gestures and vocal expression to bring alive perhaps difficult texts. Um, and you've got this idea of reciprocal storytelling that teacher encourages all the students to tell each other the story of a particular text. Very good at getting students to summarise things which is seen to be a key kind of reading skill in Palansar and Brown and my own research in 2016. Um, there's a nice handbook about storytelling school, well worth looking at, um, kind of more aimed at primary, but so many of the primary aspects can be translated to secondary. Um, the British Council have an interesting lesson plan on that link about a thing called the magic mirror, basically sort of getting students to illustrate a story um, using a drawing and then um, using that drawing to prepare to tell a story um, collaboratively. Um, the picture acts as a useful prop for stories in their storytelling, for students in their storytelling. Very interesting ways in which, you know, using sort of a visual organiser, something that Robert Marzano looks at, to get students to tell stories. Making things and telling stories. So there's an interesting article um, by this group here about how um, if you encourage students to make objects to go with their stories this seems and to uh, do things like make videos um, of puppet videos, animated videos of their storytelling this seems to have a big effect and really improve literacy communication skills as well as collaboration and helps them realise that new technologies can be a form of personal expression. Shakespearean storytelling, perhaps, you know, this would be an important area to look at if um, you're interested and really hits the nail for the subject studies assignment because um, it's so subject specific. And Gibson's article here um, points out and has transcripts of um, teachers telling stories. We've got a transcript here of a teacher telling um, the story of A Midsummer Night's Dream and Gibson goes through the sort of techniques that are used and the reasons why um, it can be very useful in kind of very short form. It really gives students a kind of a sense of how Shakespeare himself took so many of these stories from an oral tradition which in Shakespeare's time would have been told throughout the culture. So people going to see Romeo and Juliet, going to see A Midsummer Night's Dream, would be very familiar with these Greek myths that are alluded to, would be very familiar with things like Pyramus and Thisbe. Um, and then, so of course, if the teacher can then tell these stories and get students to then tell these stories to each other, um, they start to engage a lot more with the text, and that, that's um, Gibson's central argument in this uh, article. So in your conclusions, student uh, storytelling can be used in many different ways. It can be empowering and subverting stereotypes, but it can equally reinforce them if you look at certain fairy tales, for example. It can be an excellent pedagogical tool for reinforcing learning at key points, 
and English teachers need to be aware of the storytelling traditions that inform the text they teach and the society they live in. So, you know, in this uh, subject studies assignment, you hopefully you will, by using peer reviewed work and important work on this area, show that you're aware that so much of English literature is informed by storytelling and that you can bring storytelling back into the classroom if um, teachers and students are sort of educated in the right way. Thank you.